going to be sharing with you lots of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years about photographing miniatures, and I hope you will find it helpful. Now, I originally shared this video to my patron channel as part of my monthly vlog, Tea, Biscuits and Dolls House Chatter, so some of you may have already seen it. But if you'd like to find out more about my patron channel, head over to patron.com forward slash little bits and pieces by Julie. OK, so let's get started. I just want to start off by showing you my cameras and some of my camera equipment. And I'll start with this. Now this is my everyday camera. I film all of my tutorials and vlogs and the 1940s Doll's House episode using this. And how I'm actually filming it today is by using my old Canon camera, which was very similar to this one, which is an Ixus. I think the actual number's on the top. Yes, an Ixus 285HS. And the one that I'm using to film is the older version. And you'll note that it's not actually focusing in on that writing. And that's why I stopped using it because the focus wasn't working as well anymore. And I can't get macro um, sort of footage on it anymore. So I stopped using this one and upgraded to this one. And this is really good. It's got a 12 times magnification, but it's also got quite a few functions on it so that when you're either filming or photographing, you can go into that macro um, setting. Actually, <laughs> you can see there in the reflection the one I'm using. So it's very similar, but it's just the sort of model um, one before this one that I'm showing you now. And we'll come on to that macro function later on, but when you're photographing miniatures and pieces of furniture, that really is a useful function. So what I'm actually going to do now, I've showed you this one, is switch over and I'll start using this one to film from so that we get a nice clear video. And then along with this camera that I'm now using, my day-to-day -day camera, I use this small tripod and these are really good. They've got legs that you can sort of shape so as you're filming or photographing you can go down really low with the legs like that so you can sort of set it into any position so that you can get it really low and this is sort of like a ball joint here so that moves around so you can angle your camera as well. Now I've had quite a few of these. The first one I had um, didn't have legs that were as movable so I could only get it into certain positions but this one has been really good. Now I've had a couple of these and what tends to happen if you use it a lot probably not so much for taking photographs but when I'm filming and I'm just sort of constantly readjusting the angle of the legs the legs tend to fall off. So this one over here <laughs> they sort of come out like that you can see it. it's not falling off now just because I want it to but normally when I was filming the, the leg would fall off and the camera would tilt forwards but I keep hold of it anyway because you can sort of balance the legs in and get it into a position and they can still be used but this one has been a lot more sturdy and it's a slightly different make as the sort of ball joint part is slightly different and I just got that on Amazon I think it was around about £12 so they are quite pricey but this has lasted me now for quite a few months so if you do use them quite a lot then I think they're worth it and I think they're worth it as well not just for filming but also for taking photographs and I'll speak a little bit more about that later on and then my other camera which I call my big camera is my Nikon D3200 or 3200 and this one I keep for photographs for my books and also for my sort of nature photography and I think I showed you in the last vlog Matt got me that lovely large lens for this one um, which is really good for sort of outdoor photography, nature photography and landscape photography as it's a 300 millimeter lens. The one on here goes up to 55 millimeters, and that's absolutely fine for photographing miniatures and furniture. But like I say, I keep that one just for the books, just because it's really heavy. 
it wouldn't sit easily on one of the smaller tripods and also if you're sort of trying to use it at the edge of the desk it just tends to get in your way just because it is so big and bulky so the one that I'm using now that I showed you earlier my little purple day-to-day -day one is ideal for that I then also love my new iPhone now this is actually only <laughs> as Matt there just popped up this is actually um, a 7 and I was really happy with my old um, iPhone 6 and I know now I think they're on 10 or it could even be higher and all my friends have got the really modern ones but I'm really happy with this and I was happy with my old um, really old one as well which didn't even look like this and it didn't have a camera on it either but I had to upgrade my mobile because I actually dropped my last one and the little bit that connects inside um, you know where you charge it just came loose and you could hear it rattling around inside otherwise I would have been happy to keep that but I'm gonna to have to change hands so that I can actually open the phone it's all very modern as you can see <laughs> and this has actually got a really good camera on it it's given me an update there for something and I use this for all of my Instagram photos like I say, the camera on my phone is probably even better than the camera I use day to day. As you can see, it's really clear. And then also it's got a really good editing function on it. So you can zoom right in as well. And I'll do a little bit more with my phone later on as well. And we'll actually take some photographs. I'll give you some tips as well on photographing things for Instagram. But again, I always have my mobile phone with me. And even when we go out on our walks with Woody, I take that along. And this is one that I will use sort of when we're, we're out and about. And again, I really love taking sort of landscape photographs. That's one I, I took last night when it was minus um, three degrees as we were walking home and the sun was just setting. But like I say, we'll come back to the... Um, phone camera later on and I'll give you some tips as well for adding your photos to Instagram. And then just stick in with the phone camera for a moment. What I've also got here is this um, tripod adapter which actually holds onto the phone. So this is the tripod with the um, sort of loose leg. So apologies if it sort of falls over but these are really handy as well. So you can extend them like that and then you just pop your camera in like that. It's telling me to back my phone up, so apologies for that keep popping up. But if I just go back in to the camera there, like that, so you can actually put it on its own little stand. And I think it's really important to use a tripod, even when you're taking photographs, just because the slightest little movement or tremor of your hand can um, sort of affect the photograph, so it can make it look a little bit blurred and out of focus. So if you can get a tripod and use that, then I find that to be really helpful. So that is another really useful piece of equipment there. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for now. So the other thing I use quite regularly as well is my larger tripod here. And this can be used with any of the cameras and the phone camera as well. You can fit that attachment on there. And I use this for the um, sort of vlog intros and outros and when I'm filming the 1940s doll's house I use it quite a lot as well. And it's just when I need to have the camera up a lot higher when I'm filming. And again, this can be angled, so this top part could go up and down like that, which is really handy. Especially if you're sort of filming near the doll's house and you need to angle it into a room. And then these legs fold out even longer than that, so there's another sort of section that comes out of the bottom there. And also this piece is adjustable, so if I just loosen that off and then you just sort of twist like that and you can lower it up and down. I'm not doing a very good example of that there with one hand but you just sort of lower it down like that so you can get it even lower or even higher so that's really handy as well. More so I think probably for filming rather than taking photographs but if you wanted to take a photograph inside your doll's house and use a tripod then they're quite handy because you can stand them in front of it and then 
adjust the height so you can get into the room, whether it's on the ground floor or on a higher level. So that's really handy as well. And what I want to show you now is my miniature light box. So this is the light box. It comes flat packed and it's made from like a firm plastic and you just sort of fold it up. So you pull out these side flaps. That, and then you've got some little sort of mag magnetic pads at the side and you basically fold it into a little box. And then at the top here, you've got a little strip of LED lights that you actually plug in. So let me plug that in. I can't remember which side this goes. So I'll look, is it in that one? Yeah. So you plug that in like that and then that lights up the interior of the box. And this is really useful and I use this for lots of miniature photography and particularly again when I'm taking photographs for the books. Now these come in different sizes and I think this is the smallest one but you can get these a lot larger as well and I actually think I need a larger one for sort of taller pieces of furniture, dresses and things like that. I think I could do with a larger one. Now these also come with some inserts which I've got over here with my card and they're sort of two felt inserts, one in black and one in white. They've got these little hooks that hook on on the inside of the box. So you push that in like that and then that gives you a different and a clear background. You've got the white as well and what I've also done is cut a piece of my blue card to actually fit inside of there as well. So I can just sort of stand that in like that and for the books sometimes I need a blue background if it's a step then I always use the blue background so that's really helpful as well but obviously you could use any sort of background in there if you wanted to perhaps use a doll's house wallpaper or something like that you could create your own little scene in there as well. So I want to come back to this light box later on as well but I want to start just by showing you how I photograph miniatures and furniture just using the natural daylight. So I've got here just a piece of A3 blue card and colours like pale blue, pale grey work really nice as a background for photographs. Uh, camera zoom back in again, I'll focus back in. And what I like to do with this is a what I call a rolled background. So get something to stand it against, a couple of bottles of Gorilla Glue here and then just prop that up against them so that you're creating in the centre a roll. I'm going to have to move forward because the sunlight's coming in again but I don't want to have the back of the paper towards the window because I want to get some of that light coming across the piece that I'm going to photograph. Now this will try to fall forward so I'm just going to actually just pop my craft knife at the front of the card there just to sort of weigh that down and you also need enough to stand your piece on in there. So make sure you haven't got too many shadows coming across and that you've got a nice rolled background there. So I've got here my little sewing table and when I'm photographing a piece of furniture, especially if it's for a sale item, I like to photograph it from all angles and I always start with a sort of angle from the side. Now I haven't got my camera on a tripod for this but if you're just holding the camera in your hands obviously keep it still and let the camera focus in before you then press the button so make sure you've got a nice clear image in the view panel at the back before you actually click the button and then keep the camera still just for a second or two after the photograph has been taken. Then what I like to do is turn that to the other angle like that. I then get one from the front angle and face on to the piece of furniture as well. And I then like to lift the camera and look down on the top of the piece like that. And then what you can also do is just turn it to the back or open the drawer, you might want to pull the little basket out just to show the piece from all angles and show all the little details. 
I'm just going to pop that to one side and then what I've also got here is just a little vase of flowers and I just wanted to show you that this same technique can be used when photographing miniatures and what I'm going to do here is zoom right in on the miniature as close as I can go with the miniature still fitting in the screen at the back of the camera and again when you're photographing a miniature always sort of play around with the angle so you wouldn't want to go like that so that the flowers aren't showing to their best advantage. So always turn it so you've got the nicest angle for the photograph. And there I can see all of the flowers and the leaves are in a nice position there as well. So this sort of rolled background idea is just a really nice way of getting some nice photographs so that you haven't got a line coming across the back of your image. So I'm now going to photograph those same items inside the light box. So I'm coming in on the piece of furniture at that angle again and I think that's a really nice angle to photograph from. Now obviously here you can see the edges of the box at each side but what we'll do is when we download the photos onto the computer I'll show you how I would then crop that away and most programs will have some sort of photo editing or most computers sorry will have some sort of photo editing program on them so that you can crop away the areas you don't want. And I want to put the little bars of flowers in there as well. Get a nice angle again, move in as close as I can and then my camera automatically changes to the macro function. And using the light box you don't have to worry about shadows because that's really what it's for, it's just shining light onto the pieces so that there won't be any shadows around them. So I now want to have a go at taking photographs of these pieces with the different backgrounds. So that's both pieces on the black background and on the white background and they're all really clear images so whether you use the black or the white or you put in a piece of your own card it's just really down to preference and what background the piece looks nice against and I actually think these both look nice with all of those backgrounds. So I now want to talk a little bit about photographing inside your doll's house and I'm coming up here to the guest bedroom as this is the room that I've got most completed so far. Now I've got the overhead light on in this room but if I was just to take a photograph like that it all looks a little bit dark and shadowy. So what I like to use is this little ring light. Now this is a little sort of clip light that is designed to clip over the top of your mobile phone for taking selfies and things like that, but I don't use it for that. I just use it for taking photographs inside the doll's house. And it's got three different um, lights, so brightnesses, I suppose. So one, two, and three and I like to use the number three which is the brightest so if I just sort of hold this just above the camera and then take that photograph again you can see how much brighter that is but if you want to come into the room again if I move the light and we just come in like that. There are some shadows going across there. That's my head moving around as well <laughs> in front of the light. And it's all very dark again. So what I then like to do is bring the light in and I hold it where the ceiling light would be. And I move it around until I'm happy that there are no shadows in view and I'm happy with what I can see through the lens. So let's give that one a try. So I just wanted to add in here that you might be thinking why not just use the flash on the camera, but I think sometimes the flash can be so harsh that it can actually ruin the photograph. The flash will show up every tiny little bit of glue that you can't even see with the naked eye. And like I say, I think sometimes it is a little bit too harsh and can actually ruin a photograph rather than enhance it. So if you can get hold of a little portable light or even a torch will do, 
a torch or a flashlight and I think you'll find you get a better result. Another really good tip for when you're photographing inside your doll's house or a room box is to hold your camera at the height of a person. So rather than coming in and taking it from above like that, bring it down so that your camera is about five inches from the floor of the room or five and a half inches, which is a sort of average person height. And that always looks more pleasing to the eye. Another thing, here on the left, you can only see part of the door of my wardrobe. Now, if I were to take this image, I would crop that off and just come across to the edge of the dressing table like that. But you can also do that while you're actually taking the photograph. So rather than cutting through the centre of a piece of furniture, line up your camera so that you're going to the edge of a piece of furniture. And it's always going to be difficult inside your doll's house because obviously there isn't that much room to move around. The other option is that you could actually take pieces of furniture out so you could remove the wardrobe altogether and then just go to the edge of the dressing table. And then if you were to take a sort of full image of the room, just pop the wardrobe back in. Another thing I think is really nice to do when you're photographing in your doll's house is to photograph through a door. So what I'm going to do is put the little light out there in the hallway and again I'm going to put it on to the brightest setting. Play around so that you're getting a really nice light through there and even though here the bedroom is in shadow it looks as though a light's been left on out on the landing and I really like that. So even though there are shadows in the foreground I would be happy with that image. I'm just trying to get in a little bit further and you can see even more out there in the hallway. So just sort of move your camera around until you've got a really nice image. And people really like those photographs as well. And I think they make your doll's house look really realistic. Just one more tip while we're in here. Again, when you're photographing, use the um, image that you can see in front of you to line up the photograph. So if I was to go like that, you can see I'm not straight with the roof there. But if I just angle the camera like that, so that the top of my viewfinder is level along with the cove in there, that also makes your image look more pleasing to the eye. It doesn't always have to be the ceiling there. You might come over here and you want to line it up perhaps with the line of the door. So your vertical line on your lens finder or your viewer would be in line with the edge of the door. So if I just bring it round to the edge to show you there. So that outer edge is straight along the door there. So always find a line and then line your camera up with it, whether it's horizontal or vertical and you'll find that that makes for a more pleasing image as well. So I just want to go back now to my phone camera and talk a little bit about taking photographs for Instagram, if you have an Instagram account. So I've got here a little unit out of my doll's house kitchen. And some of the images that I find to be really popular is when you show the scale actually on your work surface. So you can see your cutting mat there. And then what I would do is perhaps bring in my Gorilla Wood Glue and have that stand in there. I might have my craft knife. And although I'm always saying to you to be careful and always close it down, I would perhaps open that and have that in front of the image like that. And it's all just sort of things to show the scale. Again, I'm sort of coming down to a person height with the actual unit. I would take that like that. And on Instagram, you can upload 10 images in one post. So it's a really good idea to use all 10. And that way, if people see that there's more images, they're more likely to flick through and spend more time on your post. So what you could then do is zoom in on some of the details on the item. So just sort of move your phone in there. Let's zoom in on the top there. And then perhaps you could get a photograph straight on of the unit. If you need to come lower down with your camera, and I didn't know this until I read this online, I'm just gonna take it out of the clip there. You can turn it upside down so that the camera lens is closer 
to your item. I'll just get rid of that tripod leg. <laughs> And then you can get even lower down on the item, which is really useful when you're photographing minis because you might not have a lot of room to actually get as close to the item as you need. And then again, just take your photo. So again, on your phone, you can edit your photographs. So there's the first one I took. So if I go in there like that, I might want to get rid of some of this at the side there. So I would come to my crop button. And I know that all um, phones are actually going to be different depending on what version you've got. And I'm still sort of getting used to this one as well. Now, I don't really need all of this at the top here either. You can see that's a bottle of glue, so I don't need to keep the top of it in. So I would come in to make more focus on the actual item that I'm taking a photo of. With these, you can also change the angle. So if you've angled your phone a little bit as you were taking it, you can alter it like that. I would probably go that way a little bit and line up one of the grid lines again with part of the piece of furniture. So in that case, the leg. And again, it just looks a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And then also in here, you can brighten things up. I always just come straight across to the brightness one and I always just add a little bit of brightness in. And then further along, there's one called warmth. I also like to add a little bit of warmth in to the photograph as well. And you can press done and there's your image ready to upload. So another way of photographing your furniture, whether it's on your normal camera or your phone, your phone camera, is to create a little background. So here I've just got some flooring paper and a piece of wallpaper and I've put some card behind that and again just prop that up with my glue bottles. And I've got my phone turned upside down again so I can get in close to the image. Remember just to come in at the height of a 12th scale person. So my lens is probably about five inches up there. And I'm going to take my photo. And then I think as well, when you're, if you're posting your photos onto Instagram, get a few again of the actual item from different angles and some close-ups as well. And then what I think is really nice is to come in perhaps with a pair of tweezers, just to show the scale of the item. So you would just hold those like that and I can't actually press the button now, I'm holding the tweezers there, but you get what I mean. And that will just give some idea of scale when you're not displaying your glue or work materials around the piece of furniture. And I always really love a good tweezer photo. So I just want to finish off by showing you how I would edit a photo. So I've got this photo open in Adobe Photoshop, but any computer that you can download your images onto, you will have some sort of photo editor, even if it just allows you to change the size of the photo. So the first thing I do when I open it up in here is check that it's straight. So if it looked as though I'd sort of tilted the camera a bit as I was taking the photograph, I would come into image and rotate canvas and you can pick arbitrary down here and then you can choose how much you want to rotate it. So I've got it set to three there. So let's just do that and go three degrees counterclockwise. And then it sort of tilts the picture. Obviously in this case, I, I won't need to use that, but that, that's always the first thing that I do. And then I crop the photograph and I sort of like to have an equal border around the outside edge so from here and then from the lowest point here and then from each side as well that isn't always possible but if I can sort of equal it out then I do and you've got a little central target here so you can sort of make sure that that's in the center of your image so I can probably just come over a little bit that way and then I would just press enter to crop that. And then I have a look at the brightness and the contrast. And in this particular image, because this was taken in the light box, I'm quite happy with that. But they're all things that you are able to adjust in here. So if I came into adjustments, I could come to the brightness and just make it brighter. And then so that it doesn't look washed out, you can also edit the contrast up or down. 
but I'm going to cancel that because I'm quite happy with the colour and the contrast. And then I would save that probably to about 1500 pixels. And then you'll find that if you're trying to upload a photograph to Facebook or email it somewhere, it's not going to take too long. If you leave it at the full size, then it will take a little bit longer because obviously it's going to be a larger image. And then I would save that into my file. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up lots of tips and advice to help with your miniature photography. Please don't forget to like the video as it will help others to find it. And if you haven't already subscribed, please, please do hit the subscribe button as I'd love to reach my goal of 75,000 YouTube subscribers this year. Okay, that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.